Welcome to uh, Men's Right Cooking. I haven't been posting a lot of stuff about men's rights, men's the men right movement, men right activists. Basically, Western men figuring out, um, you know, what we're doing um, incorrectly and how we can get ourselves back on track. Uh, I haven't done that for two reasons, um, two major reasons. One is YouTube begin to attack all channels that call themselves uh, MGTOW. And I, I, I'm not personally exactly, I'm not MGTOW, I'm not men going their own way. However, the MGTOW movement is the one has taught me a lot of things in my whole life, actually over my entire life, that didn't make sense. And so I just give credit to that kind of community. I would actually call myself much more of a men's right activist. Um, I'm one of those people who I'm not really overly in, interested in fixing society for me. I'm much more interested in helping fix society for uh, the young men who come after me. So um, like I said, I call my channel, you know, men's right, men's right activist cooking or men's right cooking or um, right cooking, men right cooking or something. I like to combine sitting in the kitchen with men's right and the whole theory of this channel is that when I was thrust back into the realm of being single with kids, I was scared about getting back in the, in, in, I was stunned. I was like, here, and you know, you always hear women whining and complaining about like, my goodness, I took all day to do this. And I was like, how am I going to keep house? How am I going to cook for these kids when I have them? If, um, if, 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 you know, if, you know, it takes so much time to do all this and the point of men, right? Cooking this channel, this portion, this playlist off my channel. I wish you should could subscribe only to playlist on, uh, 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 on YouTube channels. I don't know if you can, maybe there, that, that's one of the things that I would ask for the creators to do. Cause I have, I don't want to create a whole separate channel, but maybe I should do that too. Um, but anyway, um, is that I found out that's all a lie. It, it doesn't take all day to clean a house. It doesn't take all day to cook. Cooking is actually fairly easy. And I wanted to know, let all other men out there kind of know, don't believe the hype. This is something you can do. It's fairly easy. Mac and cheese is simple. Spaghetti is simple. Tuna fish salads is uh, uh, simple. Um, casseroles and stuff like that is just simple. Um, and this stuff does not take that long. They've got a thousand different recipes that take under 30 minutes to cook. Anyway, I listened to this guy named, uh, Undead Chronic and he's, like I said, he's real, he's real tough. He's not exactly MGTOW. He's more of a pump and dump guy. He, he doesn't believe in any, um, any long-term relationships with women. Um, he gets out of it. They get out of it. That's fine. And that's how he wants to keep it. And I, I'm, I respect him a lot for that kind of stuff. But uh, anyway, uh, he uh, did a response video. He does response videos all the time. And his response video was awesome. But it brought up a great article that I don't even think Undan Crotting, who's legendary, uh, did the, uh, uh, you know, did this well enough. So the article was about, uh, was from uh, the blog Life Site, one of the blogs that try to get banned all the time because it's extremely conservative, extremely right wing, great blog. And the title of the blog is Christian Women Can't Find Good Men to Marry. There just aren't any um, by a woman named, I assume, Anna Hitchinson. So in this article, Undead Chronic just roast her, but I'm not going to roast her. I don't think un even Undead may not have recognized, you know, what these guys, what these people were and how important. Life Site's a huge, great, uh, great site. But I, this just got me motivated to share this with you and you guys can dump, as, as always, you can dump this here. And by the way, if you're any women in the audience, I don't know why you're here. This is men speaking among men and being brutally honest, something that women don't even understand. I was, it was, I should, on another one, I should tell you about this one. I was like, men lie to women almost all the time. Why? Because women don't like the truth. But in this, we talk among men and we tell people we talk to each other in the truth. Anyway, this Anna chick is, is, uh, is, is bemoaning the fact that she can't find good Christian Catholic men. They call it Christian women can't find good men to marry. She's Catholic. So I'll just use the word Christian and Catholic in this, in this case, you know, I, I, she's looking for Catholic men. Okay. But she's like saying, basically, you know, she says something like, um, we're living in unique time in history, never been po politics so polarized yet, yeah, whatever. Um, she says, we constantly bemoan the state of society, the youth, universities and all that, which seem to be collectively falling into an ever deeper rabbit hole of no noxious, regressive ideas. Mm. Um, maybe. And then she says, religious affiliation, church attendance, especially among youth, among youth and men in particular has never been lower. Probably true. Pornography addiction is a scourge of epidemic proportions among, among men and even boys as young as 11. I don't like the concept of pornography addiction. Okay. I don't, I don't think, I don't like that term. Although there's some people who believe it's addictive. Let me, let me give it to you straight, Anna, and all the guys out there already know this. Men choose to watch pornography. Men, various men choose to watch pornography for different reasons. I don't believe that men cannot not stop watching pornography. Men watch pornography for many different reasons. 
you should look at it less that there's a, like anything, it's kind of like saying alcohol addiction. Everyone who drinks alcohol is not addicted to alcohol. There's actually a small percentage of people who are addicted to alcohol. The rest are choosing to drink alcohol because they like what it does for them. There's a, I believe that there's a small percentage of men who may have an addictive like behavior when it comes to pornography. The rest of the men are watching pornography for a particular reason. So get over yourself. And what, if you were a real woman actually able to think about stuff, you would actually go, why are Christian men watching pornography? Anyway. She says, yet one important side effect of all this is, is how tough it is in a new environment for women, especially Christian, Christian women, to find good husbands. No, I like to think a lot of us actually know that a lot of the most uh, conservative Christian women can't find husbands. And it's because Christian women are some of the... I, I'm going to give you a piece of answer to your little question that you haven't asked. You never really ask why can't they find it. They talk about brick sex and all this stuff, and she talks about all this stuff, you know, but she never talks about why. Like, men are choosing not to marry because men... Men don't have one is because society has released all pressure structure for men to marry and in addition christian women are demanding men somehow in this sodom and gomorrah we live in to be good christian men but those women aren't good christian women and this anna chick is one of them she's like an example it's like she doesn't even understand she can't look herself in a mirror and go i am not a good christian woman thus i don't deserve a good christian man she doesn't even she can't she can't even see it. And that's one of the things that just motivated me to, to make this video. I was like, you, you're, you can't even understand. That's, that's, I don't know. For me, it, it seems, it seems not good that you can't, that you can't understand this. So anyway, it says, um, uh, I can talk to any young woman in any social circle. Um, anyway, she says, yes, for me, uh, I'm a 32 year old single Catholic. The situation looks bleak. Yeah, it does. And Anna, it, why would I date a 32 year old woman over a 22 year old woman? If I was ever thinking about dating seriously, please tell me why. And then you'll give me whatever reason you'll give me. It'd be female centristic. And, and it tell me from a man's perspective, why he would date a 32 year old woman over a 22 year old woman. If he had the choice, if you have two choices, 22 over in 30, to where, where's where's the where's the deal so anyway she says um, the men that she's looking for are men um that are aged 25 25 to 35 that's what you're looking for that's neat for you but that's not what men are looking for and i'll and i'll again i'll oh i guess i can show it to you right now so she says i'm looking for men at 25 well see this is part of the lot so uh, there's this this really great guy who uh uh did this study and his name was Christian Ruder. He was the president and co-founder of a, a little site called OKCupid, like one of the biggest dating sites in the world. So he pulled a bunch of data out of his dating site and talked about this. And he wrote a study for an article named Jezebel, detailing the ages of men and women who they find most attractive. OK, um, and basically it shows that, you know, Anna here is going, I'm looking for this. So, Anna, who cares what you're looking for? There's women in this in this the Western world have taken almost every bit of power from men and have made marriage truly an optional thing. I'm sorry to tell you. So basically women uh, prefer men who are two to three years older, two to three years older, two to three years over, all the way through their early 20s. And then when they get into their 30s, it's fairly interesting because they begin to want men who are about their same age. And then as they get into their late 30s and their early 40s, they begin to look for younger men to the point where if a woman is 50, she finds a man who's 46 the most attractive. That's neat. That's what Anna's saying. Oh, I'm looking for a guy like this. Well, who cares, Anna? You you need to apply to guys. You need to find a guy who like who thinks you're attractive. That's what you need to do. You need to you need to put on the put the shoe on the other foot. So let's go look down here and what he found from thousands. I think he said this was thousands or tens of thousands of people he pulled this data from. All different races. Men who are 20, like 20 year olds. Men who are 25, like 21 year olds. Men who are 30, like 20 year olds. Men who are 40, like 21 year olds. Men who are 45, they like 24 year olds. Men who are 50, they like 22 year olds. Men don't change. So anyway, the concept of the matter is, uh, Anna, your piece here demonstrates why you're single, by the way. You know, so this is Anna Hitchinson. This is not her picture. This is Shutterstock. This girl is probably 25 years old <laughs> or so. Um, like I said, I'm, you know, most, many guys I see, they're, you know, they, they, whatever, but I'll tell you this, this wall is, is real. The wall is real and you're hitting it, honey. And, and I'm almost certain that in this time between you're 18 and now, there, God has put men in your path. And just like we always talk about the Holy Spirit, people oh, pray to the Holy Spirit and say, save me off the, 
the roof of the of the of the flooding house and the flooding is going on. You're on a roof and a guy comes by with, with, with a with a motor boat and says, "Hey, jump in the boat." It may not be the prettiest boat. You may not like the guy. You may not, you be a nervous, whatever. But you're like, "No, no, I'm waiting for the Holy Spirit to save me." Oh, he puts on. Yeah, you know, guess what? He puts on. Some of those guys go MGTOW. Some of those guys goes hardcore MGTOW monk. Some of those guys just go. I mean, by MGTOW, we mean celibate. These, some of these men put on and go celibate and do with their own thing. Some of these men, they choose to do that outlet in other ways. Okay. Or they choose to go marry who they want to get married. I don't know what they do, but they go on. They put on that boat leaves. The boat left, Anna. Okay. And then the next thing you talk about is that you come in and say, okay, wait a minute. I, you know, uh, you know, I'm still praying to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, save me. And next thing you know is a helicopter comes by. Hey, helicopter, come on, j- crawl up the trail. Well, the helicopter looks scary. It's way up there. It's over there. It's whatever it is. And you know what happens? You know, you say, no, no, I'm waiting for the Holy Spirit to save me. And then by the time you're dead, by the time you're 32 years old, looking around and not married, Anna, you know, Anna, you go, Lord, oh Lord, why? You, you say ignorant things like this. If the Lord willed me to be single, the Lord didn't will you to be single. He sent you a boat and a helicopter. You chose to be single. You chose to reject the men in your path. Some people call it settling. That's an easy word because it, 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 it puts the thing in your mind. It just, it just jams the thing right there in your mind. It says, this is what, you know, you can do whatever you want. You settle. It's not really, I don't call it settling. I call it how much is your, how much is this worth? There's six billion or seven billion people on the earth. That means there's three and a half billion women or females on the earth. And I don't know what vert, what portion of those, fe- those females are like, you know, of, of, you know, b- baby making years. You know, but I don't know, three, let's call it, you know, a, I don't know, if it's three billion, let's call it a billion. There's a billion women you can marry. A bill, you're one of them. And you met men previously who were functional men and you rejected them. God did not will you to be single. Your arrogance, your frigidity, your, your, your feminine, your, your feminism, most, most conservative Christian women are feminist in their approach to dating. They're feminist. This all encourage you to be single. You chose to be single. So don't blame God for your choices. You chose it. You could have, if you could have married the guy that came along when you're 18 years old, 19 years old, whatever, he may have been in a rough boat and the boat may have been tweaky, a little shaky. I don't care. I don't know what it is, but you could have gotten that boat and got off that roof and you could have five kids by the time you're 30. You could be surrounded. You, one problem you wouldn't be like looking for a million kids. You'd be like, I got enough kids. Five kids by the time you're 30. But now you're 32 and looking at God and God's like, don't look at me, brah. Don't look at me. And until you Christian, allegedly Christian conservative women can reach down and smell your own, stop smelling your own farts thinking they smell like roses, a good man, no matter how rickety his boat looks, is really good to find. And let me tell you something very clearly. And this is why I talked about MGTOW. There is an increasing number of men, Christian and not, who are tired of dealing with this current situation between men and women. And a lot of them are like, done. This is what I'm going to do and no more. So if you, the rickety boats that are coming by are even fewer and fewer. So if you, if you get an access, if you have an access to that rickety boat, then you know what? I would, I'd encourage you very heavily to go to think about that because that rickety boat is, uh, there's fewer of those than coming around. Um, everything, a lot of things in MGTOW, I, I call myself a red pill man, men's right movement. A lot of that stuff helped. And I'm going to tell you something else. As I've said before, the men's right movement helped me. The, if the men, if the men's right movement hadn't been engaged, I'd be getting even more brutally raped. And that's why I have a lot of respect for the men's right movement for those who engage and want to change the current situation. Because if I didn't have that, if that didn't happen, I would even be more destroyed. And I will share that hopefully in the future. Stay safe out there. Have a good one.